at Forrester. Ridge is sketching away when Charlie bursts in and remarks on how great it is to see him at his drafting table. He announces something sinister is up. Someone is pretending to be Ridge Forrester at the security gate. Charlie's going to do his boss a solid by staying by Pam and Donna's desk in case the jokester tries anything. I've got your back. Ridge watches him exit in consternation and asks himself, why am I paying this guy? Hope enters the cabin to grab a folder and Brooke follows her in saying she's glad she's home. I wanted to talk to you about something. Hope says if it's about Thomas, she has nothing to be concerned about. She told Deacon the same thing when she went to thank him for helping put Sheila away for good, was cornered. Bill and Ridge gave him a way out and he took it. Sheila tells Deacon that after everything he did for her, she could never hate him. Deacon sighs with relief. In the design office, Bill tells Katie, I'm right, aren't I? You still love me, Katie. Katie tells Bill she's really putting her on the spot, especially in front of Carter. Bill points out that she's the one who insisted he stay. She says she cares about him. They share a family. Bill intones, that's right, a family. A family I want back. In the main office, Ridge is exasperated when Charlie knocks on the door and says, hi me again. He asks, remember that whole debacle about the Ridge impersonator? Ridge gops, the thing we talked about just a few minutes ago. Yeah, I remember that, Charlie. Charlie stammers that there's someone he thinks he should meet. Ridge is in the groove and doesn't want to be interrupted. Charlie ducks back out the door. Ridge resumes working only for another knock to come at the door. It's RJ. Ridge marvels. Ridge Jared, now I get it. His son comes in and they embrace. In the design office, Carter tells Bill he gets that he and Katie have history and she'll always love him. But it doesn't have the same meaning for her as it does for you. He informs Bill they're together now. Bill tells Katie he has a lot of making up to do and would like to start tonight. Over dinner, Katie is afraid to give him false hope. Bill says, you know we belong together. Katie won't disrespect Carter. Bill smirks, Carter's not afraid of a little competition from little old me. Right, Carter? In the jail, Sheila marvels over everything Deacon did for her and the many moments they shared. I'll never forget it. Deacon replies, neither will I. They flash through their time together. Back in the present, Sheila muses, such happy memories. And now I'm stuck here. Deacon lets her know that he's been granted his clemency. She muses, so you get to live your life free while I'm in here. I'm happy for you, Deacon. At the cabin, Hope asks Brooke what she wants to talk about. Brooke says it weighs on her sometimes. I miss him. Hope smiles. Oh, it's this conversation again. You want to talk about RJ? She tries to explain to her mother why RJ needs to travel and live his best life. Brooke can't understand why he can't bring his talent home. She thanks Hope for being the child who stayed. Hope jokes, does that make me the favorite? At Forrester, Rich notes that his son has been working out when he's not busy influencing people on the World Wide Web. You look good. RG thanks his dad and asks if he saw his latest post. Ridge cringes over him bungee jumping and says he can't believe his mom didn't tell him he was coming. RG says she doesn't know, and he didn't want to spoil the surprise. They hug again as Ridge says it's good to see him. RG gifts Ridge with his favorite licorice from Denmark. He has something for his mom too and asks if she's there. Rich says Brooke will be there later and will be so happy that he's back. In the design office, Carter tells Bill that Katie can have dinner with whoever she wants. She knows how much I care about her and I know how much she cares about me. Bill warns that they share a son and he wants his family back. I want my Katie. He turns to her. And I think you'll come back after I prove you're the only woman in the world for me. At the jail, Deacon regrets putting Sheila in there but she thinks it's the smartest thing he's ever done. He has his future ahead of him, and she may end up spending the rest of her life there. You go and you live your life. Don't wait for me, Daddy. Deacon tears up. At Forrester, R.G. marvels at Sheila finally being behind bars and tells Ridge he could get a job as a cop. 
Talk turns to Brooke and Ridge says she's a beacon of light for everybody. But there's a sadness below the surface. She misses you. R.G. fumes. Are you trying to guilt trip me? Suddenly, they hear her talking to Charlie outside the door. R.G. hides and Ridge booms. Logan, hey. Brooke says Charlie mentioned a surprise. Rich thinks maybe it's that thing he was going to show her back there. She asks if it's one of his creations. Rich says it's more something they created together. Brooke is thrilled when R.G. steps out from behind the changing screen. She marvels that she was just talking to Hope about him and asks if he's staying for a while. He has travel offers on the table in Costa Rica and other places. What I really want is to spend some time with you guys. I figured I'd stick around and post some ala content for a while. Brooke's ecstatic and Ridge says, that's great. They share a group hug. 